Hey, welcome to another episode of Inspirational Focus with Deacon Terry Acox. In last episode, we looked at the first three commandments uh, in which it's the love of God. And in this segment, we're going to be talking about the love of man, the last seven commandments. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome to another episode of Inspirational Focus with uh, Deacon Terry Acox. Uh, Deacon Terry Acox is a Roman Catholic deacon with the uh, uh, different parishes in Southern Ohio. As a matter of fact, you serve seven different parishes. I serve at seven different parishes on a rotating basis. On a rotating basis. And, uh, you know, in some episodes we talked a little bit about the uh, responsibilities of, of deacon, but the they're many and varied. Yes, uh, we do a lot of different things. The primary role of a deacon is one of service. Of service? Huh? Yes. Okay. And I, I know last last episode we talked about the first three commandments, uh, the love of God. Right. Uh, and uh, in this particular segment we're going to be talking about the love of man, right. the last seven commandments. The last seven commandments. And as I mentioned before, the the... Catholic commandments, if you will, are di slightly different than the Protestant commandments, only in their numbering. Right, right. Okay. But, but they're pretty much the, but, uh, the, the same. They, the, if you look at the full text of all the commandments, they're pretty much the same. I, I, I understand. And, and uh, you know, and the, the study of the different ones uh, for our viewership, uh, if, if they're out of order or something of that nature, uh, again, as uh, Deacon and Terry is explaining. We'll we'll get to the, to the we'll ones. get to <laughs> So so we we looked at the first three commandments uh, in the love of God. Right. Uh, the next uh, series of commandments really deal with with we as human beings and how we treat others. Yeah. The fourth through the fifth through the tenth commandments deal with how we relate to one another. Um, most of them are the type to say, you shall not do something. But the fourth commandment is the only one that is actually a positive commandment. Huh. Uh, that's true. It, it says that you are to honor your father and your mother. And it is all, the only commandment that actually has a result if you do this. And it says, the, the actual text says, honor your father and mother that your days may be prolonged and that it may go well with you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So there is a positive reinforcement if you obey the commandment. But, no, but we must not limit the commandment itself to the honoring of our father and mother. It has to do with honoring everybody. Parents have a responsibility under this commandment. Children have a responsibility under this commandment. And society as a whole has a responsibility okay. under this commandment. Parents are supposed to care for their children. Children are supposed to obey their parents, honor them, take care of them when, when they need to be taken care of, and society as a whole needs to um, obey legitimate authority. Oh, okay. Well, that, that, that sort of makes sense. You know, sometimes when we, we just take it at face value, honor your father or mother, it does not necessarily mean that everything that they say or do, we should follow. Right. It just means that we put them in, in esteem, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to call it that, uh, to where uh, they are viewed upon as, right. as and again, beneficial to the... It, it says to honor your father and mother and your and children's responsibility is to obey their parents. But if your parent tells you to do something that's wrong, you have a responsibility to not do that. I mean, God has given everybody, including children, free will. I understand? So if, if you are told to knock down that wall, for example, with no legitimate reason, then you're not supposed to do that. 
And we, so, so what you're saying is we do have the right to question. We have a right to question what we are told by legitimate authority. Uh, now that that's rather interesting when you you also said that as a society as a whole we should honor those individuals that like like for instance politicians politicians uh, mayors of cities right police authority that type of thing. right and and so consequently if we are as human beings hating a certain group of, of individuals like for instance uh, uh, suppose I hate politician X Y and Z in the spirit of the of, of the commandment I, I think is wrong uh, you know to hate right um, well that could also follow under under the fifth commandment of thou shalt not kill unmitigated hate is not a good thing for anybody. Um, we need to control our emotions to the point that we treat everybody with the dignity, the, the dignity that they deserve as a human being that God has given them. Well, you, you bring up a really good point. Uh, most of us don't kill. Most right. of us internally, uh, w whether you're a Catholic or a Protestant or another faith, know that it's wrong to kill. It is wrong. It is always wrong to take innocent life. Right. But I think in the broader sense, what you're you're pointing out is that killing can be many different forms. Many killing can encompass many different things. The actual commandment can encompass many different things. For example, you mentioned unmitigated hate. I hate that particular politician because he doesn't do the things that I think he should do, which, which is wrong, uh, because he may be doing things for the good of society as a whole. I see. And just because you don't agree with him, Right, and and there's, um, you know, I think psychologists have pointed out that unmitigated hate uh, not only kills that individual's psychologically can kill him, but it also can kill you. Mm -hmm. You, if I completely hate a person, it destroys something within me. Yeah, um, well, that makes sense. And. Anger, for example, uh, you can't. It's not wrong to be angry with somebody, but it's wrong, basically, to carry a grudge, if you will. Um, we all get angry. It's a human emotion. We all have these emotions that affect all of us, and we act out on them occasionally. But if my anger is so great that I'm going to ruin someone's ruins, reputation, ruin someone's reputation yeah. or ruin their life, then that is wrong, and that is wrong under the fifth commandment of thou I shalt see. not kill. I see, I see. Uh, and, and so it is really a, uh, a tremendously misunderstood commandment. Right. Well, all of them were misunderstood to, to an extent, one extent to another. But the, the, all of the commands in, include things that do not necessarily, we don't normally think fall under the, if we, if we take the commandments by, from the literally, then we leave out a lot of different things. Well, that's true. That, that is true. Uh, now, on the, the sixth one, I think, is a, um, a unique commandment because there's all sorts of different definitions, and that is, you shall not commit adultery. Right. When we get married, it is God's plan for us to be married to one person. I'm married to my wife, she is married to me, and there is, and the marriage includes the, con, the context between us and all the actions between us. We are not supposed to go out, for example, and I'm not supposed to go out and date another woman, okay, 
Well, yeah, if you're married, married. yeah. My yeah. wife would be extremely <laughs> unhappy well, it, with it that. It destroys that bond. But it, it destroys that yeah. bond between us. Yeah. We have a love bond of love, which is given to us to we develop through our dating process, and and is it is blessed and sanctified during the marriage ceremony itself in the church, and. It destroys my actions with another woman, and her or her actions with another man would destroy that particular bond between us. Would would, would you also think that, <laughs> um, that um, since since we get married at a, usually at a uh, very young age, uh, that that sometimes um, what we think is love is really more infatuation. That that's always uh, possible. You know, and, and uh, when when we do enter into that, that marriage, etc., people change. And uh, well, people are going to change over the span of their life. Right. Right. But in in a marriage, you don't necessarily. Well, let me backtrack a bit. You start dating, for example, you and I. We might start dating a woman, and then. We three months later we get married. Now that's a fairly quick right. dating and engagement process. Right. And the church has a a process that they want us all to go through that is called premarital uh, training, assessment, different things. But they want us to look carefully at ourselves and our future spouse so that we might Stay married. They don't want. They don't want to keep us from getting married. Right. They want us to stay married once we do get married. Uh, yeah, that that is a. Uh, it's a series of uh, sessions that the individual couples have with the priest or a designated a, a designated person uh, in which they they sit down and they talk about. Um, some of the different aspects that maybe the young couple aren't aware of. Like, for instance, what happens you have a, uh, five kids in three years, you know. Yeah. You know. Well, they, 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 a lot of the different aspects you talk about in these sessions, how many kids do you want, you know, jobs, uh, financial considerations, where are you going to live? Whose parents are you going to visit on holidays? Sure. There's lots of different aspects of that. And, and maybe that makes makes good sense because oftentimes young people haven't had the experience uh, or they haven't really given a lot of thought as to yeah. um, the in-depth kinds of things. Right. You know, a lot of priests and deacons and other people who prepare couples for marriage, they would like for the couples to put as much planning into the their marriage as they do into the wedding. I understand. I understand. And and so they, uh, the, you're, what you're saying is the Catholic Church asks the individuals or requires the individuals to go through a a series of sessions mm -hmm. in which they they sit down with the individual and and talk about the direction that right. they want to go. That's true, and that helps them. That st actually strengthens the bond between the couple so that they do not commit adultery, or if, if the, commit a sin against the the ninth commandment, which is, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. I see. I see. Well, I'd, I'd like to get to that one, uh, but I have just one more more thought on, on the adultery. Uh, or not. I have one more question. Um, so, sometimes when we have young children, uh, there's an old adage about after seven years, uh, some men lose the interest. And uh, oftentimes the children are young. And we, it, it's unfair to the mother and it's unfair to the young'uns mm -hmm. uh, that, that 
a jaw tree enters into the picture. Well, it's unfair to the the other party involved right. also. Right. I mean, there's nothing nothing good that can come out of an adulterous relationship. That's true. That's true. And um, so, so in essence, uh, not committing adultery does have a lot of ramifications for a family. It you has, know. has ramica ramifications for a family and for the other person's family also, if, if there's a family involved there. <laughs> and I, I know that the uh, Roman Catholic Church uh, is pretty much geared toward family orientated uh, right. spirituality. Uh, well, God himself is is a unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that, in a human sense, the family represents that unity in that the father and the mother and the, and the children of that relationship represents that same type of unity of love. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, and now, uh, Commandment 7, you shall not steal. And um, I, I, again, we're dealing with stealing goods, but we're also about stealing a person's reputation. Right. So, uh, what, what, what's your thoughts on you shall not steal? Well, obviously, you don't go in and rob banks and, and things of that nature. And I'm not an attorney, but I've heard that there are actually some legal means that you can use to might you might take a person's property away from them or something of that nature. For example, you might have them declared incompetent, which is not be true. Uh, you might have... Um, um, I can't think of another. So, so what you're saying is, if I'm old and decrepit, and I'm having other people watch out for me, um, it would be just wrong to, if I gave them the power of attorney, them to use that money. Uh, yeah, the power of attorney is a good good example because you're giving them the authority to write checks from your bank account, for example, to pay for your property taxes, your food, whatever. And if they use that authority to take that money and put it into to their own benefit, hmm. then that is stealing. Hmm. Hmm. In interesting. Uh, now we come back to that bear false, or no, uh, number eight is, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Right. What, what does that mean? You don't tell a lie about them. You don't do things that would intentionally hurt them. Um, for example, I shouldn't go out and say, Patrick, you're no good bum. For, for any number of reasons. Now the reasons to some extent may be true. So I'm not supposed to go out and ruin your reputation unnecessarily. Um, especially if the re what I'm saying is not true. But if, if they are true, and you still have a good, and you have a do, happen to have a good reputation, then I need to be a little bit careful about when I say these things about you. Well, let's take let's take a sort of an obtuse example. Let, let's just suppose that uh, someone calls me about a reference, and I would not give a good reference about that individual. Mm -hmm. uh, is it is it okay to tell what my feelings are? It it, it is to an extent. Um, for example, if somebody wants you to be a work reference for them. Um, you might say that that person was an excellent worker, showed up on time, did extra stuff. If it's all, assuming it's all true, did all these good things. But if if it's not, if you say something like the person was late all the time, came in late, did shoddy work, and if it's not true then you've borne false witness oh, against see. that person. I see. But, it, but it's all right to tell the, the truth about I would say that would depend on the situation. Okay. There are situations where you may not want to tell everything you know about a person. For example, um, let's say the person you're giving a reference to um, 
intended to play around on his or her spouse. Okay. All right. But, but otherwise, they were a a model employee. Okay. The fact that that person would play around on his or her spouse might be a, a moral mark against them, but it has nothing to do with, with their, their work. Their ability, with their work. Uh -huh, okay. But so, no, that makes sense then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Now we come to number nine, which is sort of related to number six. Uh, you shall not commit adultery. Number nine is you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. All right. This is where, and this this in the, the tenth commandment also, uh, is is where one of the differences is. One of the differences is between the Protestant commandments and the Catholic commandments. In the Protestant commandments, nine and ten are combined together. I see. In the Catholic commandments, they're, they're separated. And the word, the reason for this is that we are separating a person's life or a person, a human, a human attribute, a human thing from physical things. I see. Okay. I see. Uh, for example, nine says you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. Okay. Now, what this means is that I should not want to possess her. Uh, Possess another. Possess well, another husband's wife. Well, not not. I do don't need to be excessive in my want I desire see. to possess. I see. Okay. I see. Um, I, I I I think um, you know, as semantics come in involved. Um, we, we have to look at the times, you know, 300 years ago, wives were considered not as equal. Right. That they were considered more of a uh, being protected by the husband. Mm -hmm. And in today's society, we, we have since recognized that men and women are equal. They, they just have different uh, responsibilities. Different in life. responsibilities, attributes. And, and soon, that probably will say, you shall not cover your neighbor's spouse. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. Uh, it depends, yeah. depends on the... Um, your view on, on what what a spouse may be. But you shall not cover your neighbor's wife has to do with sins of the flesh. Okay. For example, if I'm not married and I go out with a young lady who happens to be married, she is committing adultery. Or if I should have relations with her, she would be committing adultery against her husband. I would not be committing adultery because I'm not married. But I would be con committing the sin of fornication. Okay. Because I'm not having sex with the person who is my wife. Okay. All right. But on, on the same token, if a wife goes after a married man... It's the same situation, same situation if she is not married. Right, right. So, so in essence, you know, it really comes down to, um, you know, wives, males, you know, men, you know, things of that nature. Oh, that makes sense. And now, uh, any anything else on that? Well, like I said, it has to do the ninth commandment of that you shall not covet your neighbor's wife has to do with sins of the flesh, um, and. To to some to a large degree, that has to do with sexual type things, okay. um, but also has to do with things that you should not be. Um, uh, I can't think. Um, doing things that with other people that are not legitimate. For okay. Um, or socially acceptable. Or socially or acceptable. Morally acceptable. Huh? Uh, that's interesting. Um, and then uh, the the last one: you shall not cover your neighbor's house. Now you had mentioned uh, number nine dealt with the flesh. Number ten deals, deals with, with the it. things that the okay. the other person may may own. We all have the right to own property. Mm -hmm. We all have the right to own things legitimately obtained. Um, 
you've got a nice fancy car that I can't afford to buy with under my own present circumstances. And I say, oh, I surely really would like to have Patrick's fancy car. No, that's, okay. <laughs> I mean, to the point where it becomes an, a, an overwhelming desire of okay. mine. I may never get it, but I do not, just the fact that I have that overwhelming desire to own your fancy car, that takes part of my, actually takes part of my life away from God. I see. Because I'm putting that, that fancy car of yours up to a high place, almost to the, almost to the point where I may worship God. So, worship, worship the car rather than God. So covet, really, if you want to come right down to it, is that desire inside your own heart uh, that, that really wants something above and beyond Okay. No, that makes it's a, sense. It's a desire in a person's heart that would take his attention, his his attention, his desires, and his own desires for uh, personal for monetary stuff, uh, material things. Huh. What I was trying That's to think it. of yeah. material things to put them at a point where he would. Place them above his family, above his faith, and that type of thing. Now, I, I know we only have two minutes left, and I'm going to put you on the spot, Jerry. Uh, of all the commandments that we went through, what is the one that you think is the best? I have to go with the words of Jesus. When okay. He said, the first and greatest commandment is to love your God with all your strength, with all your soul, and with all your might. And the second is like to it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, those two commandments just encompassed everything we've talked about in the last two episodes. Okay. We talk about the love of God, and I'm having to be one that I've heard this said before, that if you love truly love God and place Him in a point where that love is the only thing that you're trying to maintain, everything else falls into its place into its proper place in your life. If you truly love God, you will not covet material things. You will not steal. You will not kill or any of the things that, that are associated that might fall under these commandments. That God is first in your life and that's the way it should be. Hmm. Well, that, that's uh, very, very good. Uh, we're, we're talking with uh, Deacon Terry Acox. Deacon Terry Acox is a uh, uh, deacon with the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, he services or serves uh, seven different parishes in Sciata County area. Uh, he has been a deacon for seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Um, and um, he always has some really good words of wisdom um, and really appreciate Terry your your being involved in inspirational focus it's, it's a pleasure to be here uh, I'm Patrick Dangle I want to thank the listening audience for viewing and uh, if you ever have any questions uh, give Terry or myself a call and we'll do our best to uh, find their appropriate answer Thank you.